So that's all the Yu-Gi-Oh there. What about shoes? What what shoes are you trying to get rid of? Yeah, the colour is that working? Yeah. Here you go. Well, there's that full set going at four hundred. Someone's trying to sell it out. Yeah. Anyone buy Star Wars VCR stuff? Whoa. I've never done a deal like that before, but that makes sense. Yeah, cool. Damn, it's hot. Yeah, man. Jeez. How you doing? You cool if I film? Yeah, brother. Of course. How you been? Good, my man. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. Look at all this. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to stink right now. I'm oh, sweating. Me too, dude. <laughs> me too. There you go. Watch around your shorts or something. Beauty. Alrighty. What did we want to look at first? Well, I mean, clothing for me isn't really what I'm dabbling in. Really? Um, I've sort of got rid of all of my clothes. I've got like a box full left and that's it. Yeah, nice. Um, but video games, collectibles, the cards, that sort of stuff is what I'm cool. all about. Cool, I've got the large majority of the cards and whatnot here. Little bits and bobs, that's all the Yu-Gi-Oh there. So there's a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh in there. I was going to say, they're not shoes, are they? You've, you've, no, Do you have no. any shoes? Oh, I've got a ton of shoes as well, yeah. To sell? Yeah. Yeah, okay. A ton of shoes, like 50 plus pairs. These are all the... Yeah, we'd have to go through all of these, wouldn't we, to work out what's what? Yeah, there's a bunch of first edition stuff. Not that that necessarily means anything. No. But a ton of it is first edition. It might just be bundles or something that we look at. Yeah. From a sell perspective, like yeah. if I'm putting it on eBay, I'd probably just bundle it up. Yeah, there's a few different decks and whatnot in there that you could sell off as this deck, that deck, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, bit of a mix mash. Yeah, and then, yeah, you just got... All the Pokemon. Um, what about shoes? What what shoes are you trying to get rid of? Oh, let's let's go have a look. See, I'll show you. I've got a couple here. Yeah. The shoe cupboard. Yeah, some in here. What's this? And do you have the date that you're back? Uh, yeah. Back. Or is it a one-way ticket? Um, no, nah, back in February, early February. Early Feb. Yeah, nice. Is that cool. Yeah, some burgundy docks. You hardly wore them. Nah, never worn them. They're in great condition. Yeah, I literally bought them to resell and just didn't resell them. Yeah, right. Actually, I'll take you around if you want to see them. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of them have been quite heavily worn, so they wouldn't want to, you probably yeah. wouldn't want to bother yep. grabbing them, but I've got a few more less destroyed pairs. Have you been doing much selling? You're clearing, clearing much out. I think last time we spoke, you were going to try and move some stuff yourself. Yeah, I did a few more runs and just, I don't know what happened. It's like I killed it the first couple of times. Yep. And then I oh, was... Oh, down at the markets. Yeah. And yeah. then I just struggled and struggled. Yeah, right. Just had some bad weeks. Yeah, gotcha. So I got these guys here. Yeah, okay. And are they genuine as well? Yeah, yeah. Everything's real. Yeah, nice. Not one for off-brand shoes. No. Yeah, that's sweet. I don't know, those yeah. I've worn a bit. Yeah, that can be alright though. Yeah, a little bit of wear on the soles though, isn't there? Yeah. Good shoes These though. These guys. Nike Court Some Tour. Some kids TNs, bruh. Oh, the TNs. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. They are popular though, aren't they? The they teams? are, they are. I actually quite like them as a shoe. There's a bit of stigma here in Australia, obviously, but I, I quite know. like the build of them. 100%. Oh, good too, the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, I've got all of these. A ton of shoes. I need to clean these dudes up. I love these. The oh, Reebok I haven't pumps. seen them before. Oh, the pumps. Yeah, these are old school. Insta pump. Yeah, wow. I, They're a collector shoe, surely, the pumps. Yeah, I think so. They're ones that I need to clean up and wear again. Yeah. But yeah, I've got yeah, all of these dudes sitting in here. Yeah. Um, what else? Video games. Video games. How are we looking in that category? Half okay. Probably nothing you'd be interested in, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it's just um, some of the leftover games from... What you didn't take the first round? Yes. Some PS2 games, none of your classics, really. Just no. little bits, and yeah, I don't think you'd be interested in any of the games, to be honest. Nothing gotcha. cool left over. Yeah. Unless you wanted a DS or a color. Yeah, the color is that working? Yeah. Yeah. Sick. And you got some games in there. Yeah. Mario Bros. Giraffe. Yeah, nice. Oh, I remember Pokemon Pinball. Yeah, that was a, a fun one. I jammed that. 
Like one Whitehall. Pool with the old cash converters price tag on it. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, yeah, T2, Terminator. There's a couple of good games there. Yeah. Um, and then they were all cards in there, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, cards, cards, cards. We've got more cards over here. And then I've got the full McDonald's 25-year oh, yep. thingy-ma-bob. Yep. Yeah, nice. How have you gone, by the way, with um, the bits and bobs that you got? Well, like everything, the good stuff went really, really fast. Nice. Um, and then I'm, I'm still holding on to probably a good half of it still. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you tend to just sit on, on the other stuff for a few more months. So. Yeah, until the right person or whatever. Yeah, it's a, a lot of sitting, but that, I mean, certainly there were a fair few right at the beginning that just shot off straight away. Yeah, nice. Um, so it was, it was good. But um, I'm sure the other stuff will sell. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, that's it. Um, all part of the game, I guess. Mm. Yeah, a lot of celebrations in there, hey? Yeah, we've got Selly. We've got 25. These are some of the Maccas ones as well, which I've probably got, to be honest, two or even three full sets of the McDonald's ones as well on top of that. They were tw was it 25 cards in that set? Or was it more? Oh, 25 main cards, and I yeah. think there was... I'm pretty sure there were specials that were with that as well, if my memory serves me correct. Let me have a look. Yeah. Here you go. Well, there's that full set going at 400. Someone's trying to sell it out. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't think it was worth that much. I didn't think it would be. Well, I no, mean... not sold, so, right? Yeah, no, just... Have to see what the sold, so. Players, guys. Someone else here selling it for 180. One, okay, so it's a, yeah, it's. I mean, there's enough there to say you could probably push 200 at most. Yeah. I mean, that's a bit of an outlier at 400. Yeah. But maybe 180. Um, who's the last? Dude? So it's just one card that I got to find for <laughs> yeah. complete that set, eh? It'll be pretty easy to find because I've got a stupid amount of them, so he'll be in there. Would you have multiple sets? Probably. Oh, okay. Probably multiple sets. I only bothered to make it up once, but I would say you'd have multiple sets oh, in there. Wow. Considering I have three hollow Pikachus, I would dare say you've probably got three full sets in there. Oh, wow. Jeez, that's elite. Yeah, okay. If anything, you'd be missing... You'd probably have definitely two full sets, and if you... You'd maybe be missing one or two cards to make up three, but yeah, I have a stupid amount of those. Were you just madly collecting them, were you? Yeah, well, I had a friend who was working at McDonald's at the time, and she just hooked me up with, like, ridiculous amounts of it. That's elite. Uh, oh, little Pikachu money box is cool. Yeah. Big peak of money. Surely someone would want that. Um... What are you going to do when you don't... Oh, is that it there? Oh, yeah, nice. Worms 2, Jamie Oliver, a couple of games. Yeah, is there anything else? Theme Park. Theme Park in there too. And that's a... Is it a DS... Yeah, Light. Yeah, DS Light. Yeah, DS Light with the, with the scribe too. Yeah. Cool. That's in a nice case too, actually. Yeah. I thought I had these guys in here. I haven't touched this thing in forever. Yeah, right. Don't know where that would be. No, that's all good. Is there any... Nope, just a charger in there though. Oh, DS charger. That's handy. Yeah, yeah that's handy. And this is the full set of McDonald's. Nice. I think I dropped out this dude here. So it's meant to be a 24th. I have a look at the card list. It'll definitely still be in amongst there. In there somewhere. But I've just dropped it somehow. Yeah, no stress. I'll yeah. have a look so you know what you're looking for. Yeah, nice. That's cool, 25 for celebrations. I just asked about hats, and apparently we've got a, a few to look at. But let me see. Carlton number. I've got a big bag of hats somewhere. This dude's kind of cool, 1985 Mario cap. That is cool. Yeah. Love that. Very cool. Put that one over there. Um, back onto the resale collector side of things. Yeah. Anyone buy Star Wars VCR stuff? Whoa. Um, 
I'm not massive in knowledge on the VHS. Mm. Um, what have you got up there? It's probably people looking at this going, oh, that could be worth a bunch. Yeah, that's the way I feel, because some of it, you know, collectors for something like Star Wars, some of them are big on it. Have to do some research that might into look it. special. I think these are cassette tapes oh, of right. Star Wars. And you know about the cloudy, cloudy, oh, that's in good condition. No mould in there. <laughs> it's always the way. There you go for a game, Doom 3. Doom 3. It's an OG banger. And then it's just these bags up here. What's these That's guys? Little really pops. Yeah, Grindelwald and. Oh, yeah. um, I forget what those creatures are. From the Harry Potter world. Yeah, nice. Who's this guy? Oh, yeah. Black Panther. I got so much random stuff. Do you ever? <laughs> it's awesome. You know, there's a band tee. I actually like this one. I'll keep this. The monsters. The monsters. The monsters. The monsters. That does look pretty rad, actually. Oh, that could be almost it. Apart from maybe some shoes around the back there. Yep. Uh, we'll go have another geezer around there. Yeah, pull some shoes out, but that could be the majority of it, I think. Cool beans. Um, <clears throat> so I think, obviously, these Nikes were good. I might hand it to you, actually. Those. Do you reckon we clean them up and they'd be a collector item? Yes, but I'm keeping those. Oh, you're guys. holding them? I like those guys. Nice. Um, what about these TNs? <laughs> yeah. You reckon we could flip them? Um, probably. What size are they? Uh, so. Especially considering the size of them too, this new generation seems to be loving it more and more. Five youth, yep. Alright, let's give them a go. Um, let's do these. Very good, Nick. I reckon then. Three, cool. three pairs there. Um, now, what are you going to do with all this stuff I'll come Sunday morning? Probably the 95% that's here yeah. is either going to be Christmas presents for friends and fam or just off to the office. Yeah, makes sense. Because I was thinking, I was like, look, it's obviously a lot of stuff and rather than working out a price to buy it all, if you're obviously coming back as well, I wanted to have a chat to you about consignment and see if that was something that you'd be interested in. What's consignment? So consignment is something that I've done with a few people. I don't do it all the time, but when there's large lots like this, mm. I, I go ahead and just take the lot. I go ahead and list them all up. And then mm. from there, we do a percentage split of the profit. Okay. So like GST obviously needs to come out of it because I've got to pay the goods and service tax yeah, and things like yeah. that. Um, so what I do is I spreadsheet the lot. So anytime a listing goes up onto eBay that someone supplied me with, I've got a spreadsheet for that person. Mm -hmm. And then when stuff actually sells, it breaks down what the percentage split would be. Mm. and then I get that share, you get that share. Okay, cool. So that way, you know, rather than working out a purchase price up front, it's just, I'll go and try and sell it all, and then when you get back in February, it's like, well, what didn't okay. sell? Yeah. And then I just give it back to you. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, come February when you return, that's why I was like, well, how long are you away for? Because we could literally try and sell it for that period of time. Mm. And then what does sell, obviously we split. Yeah, we okay, do a, cool. A percentage split. It's just something I wanted to see if you're aware of or see if you're interested in. I am, I'm interested in that for sure. I'm trying to think like, if we did say, X amount of cash today, uh -huh. cut that sort of into the consignment, you know, like the consignment uh, deal. So like say, Oh, so have a buffer. Yeah. So, yeah. so whatever amount of dollars and then just, take that out of a consignment deal I hear you. I hear you. I, I know exactly what you mean yeah it's kind of like these items can be also part of the consignment yep. but I've got the buffer of, or I've already given yeah. you cash up front yeah that makes sense yep well I'm happy to do 300 cash up front yep and then and then we'll just consign to a percentage okay consign to a percent now typically I've always done 70 30 worth yep. of a split so I'll take it away obviously list it store it done deal yep if you're happy with that for sure um, and that's 70, 70 me, yeah, 30 you. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting 70% <laughs> no. for you to do all the work, sell it, and then, yeah, I'll take my yeah. 30. I probably should have stipulated yeah, no, that too. Yeah. But, um, 70, 30, it's, it's, uh, I've always found that everyone's always been happy when I've done it that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 300 cash up front as a buffer. Yeah. And then we'll... I've never done a deal like that before, but that makes sense. Yeah, cool. All right. Bit of a unique deal, that one there, guys. Um, yeah, it, I think, 
really unique because I just don't exactly know the true value of a lot of the stuff that I've got. Um, and I, I know having previously bought off Sam that there was some really good stuff that sold for some great money. Um, so he does have some really great items in there. I, I know it. Um, you know, if he's got that Pokemon celebration set going for $180 and he reckons there's three sets in there, by the time I go through it and do all my research, um, you know, there could be you know, multiple thousands of dollars worth of value in this haul. And I've, I've obviously given the $300 cash and then we're going to do consignment, as you guys heard. And we're going to do 70% for myself and 30% for him. I think if you guys out there are looking to get a lot of stock and you're maybe not wanting to fork out as much money up front, or maybe you're not too sure on the deal, just like I was there with that deal, um, consignment is always something you guys can utilize. That, that is something you can put up your sleeve as a bit of an opportunity to just get your hands on the stock. Um, I would say with consignment though, I, I typically only really sort of offer it to people that I'm a, I know. Um, obviously having already bought off Sam before, there was definitely a relationship there already with him. Um, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a really genuinely good guy that I, I know that I can trust. And I think he's got the same sense for me as well. It, it does go vice versa. So when you put on the, um, the consignment play, um, you know, they're, they're generally more receptible to it. And they kind of like the fact in, in Sam's predicament that he was going away for an international trip for a few months. He was waiting to get his hands on some cash. And if I just went in there and I gave him $300 and just bought a couple of items... You know, he's going to miss out on me being able to send him a check for some form of an amount, you know, in a couple of weeks' time when we start to sell a bit more of his stuff. So, I don't know. I'd be very curious to get your opinion in the comments. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I don't really ever do consignment deals. You know, it's, it's rare, certainly a private pick. So, I'm always just going in there and just trying to pay up. But now having a bit, little bit of a buffer there for $300 and a bit more stock, I feel like it was a pretty good deal. But I'd love to know your thoughts. And you probably need a bit more of an intel into what I've got, right? You know exactly. I mean, I put the camera over everything, but you probably don't exactly know what I've got my hands on to make an accurate judgment. Um, so I might actually just take you back home now and um, just go through some of the stuff and get an estimation of how much it's going to be worth. I think the easiest way to do it would be to work out how much is going to be my $300 money back and then how much stock I've got left over, which is going to be a consignment play. So there we go. All right. So just be madly researching. Madly researching and sifting through what is ultimately actually hundreds of items in this haul. And I wanted to take you through the 15 listings that I've already gone and put up onto eBay. There's obviously a lot more listings to go, um, but I've put 15 up. I always want to get my big hauls, just like to go through my favorite stuff and list up my favorite stuff first. Um, there's obviously a lot of work to go into the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but I've got some Unreal cards to take you through at the end of this little haul run. Uh, and then there's a bunch of Pokemon cards as well that I haven't even been able to look at. Um, so this is, by all means, just the tip of the iceberg. Um, the first one here is the Game Boy Color. So whenever I see a Game Boy Color, I'm always going to go ahead and purchase it. My only negative with this, even though the battery case is in pretty good working condition there, it just doesn't have a back clip. Um, which is frustrating for sure. That will obviously get its full value. So I'm going to go for about $125 on this. This was selling for about $135 from what I was seeing on eBay. So I'm going to go $125 uh, because the back clip was missing. Um, the next one as well, there was a comp on eBay around $45 for a vintage Pikachu money box. So I'm actually going to go with $50 for this. It does have Nintendo 2000 uh, on the bottom there. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, Pokemon Pinball. Notice how all the Pokemon stuff goes on to do really well. This Pokemon Pinball game I've listed up for $45. There are a bunch of comps for this game going for about $50. So we should be able to get a $45 sale price pretty much straight away for that, I would say. Um, sticking with the Game Boy, there was also Super Mario Brothers Deluxe uh, that I've gone ahead and listed. Um, this one was going for about $60. Super Mario Deluxe. There it is there. So that was a really good Game Boy game. Probably the best out of the entire lot. Um, we had Star Wars that I've gone ahead, that one there, Star Wars. I've listed that one up for $35, uh, so that was pretty decent as well. And then we had Super Mario Land, um, albeit there is obviously some, some tear away on the artwork there, but that shouldn't, that shouldn't affect the price too heavily. Um, Super Mario Land, I think, was around the $20 to $25, and then Mario and Yoshi was about $20 as well. Um, so in those, in those Game Boy games, I think it's best to do them individually and get the individual sale prices than lotting them up as a bundle 
with the console. I think just splitting them out, you're going to maximize your return. Um, so there's some really good uh, results in all of the Game Boy stuff. Um, well over a few hundred dollars worth of value there. Um, the Pikachu, obviously 50 bucks as I touched on. Uh, and then we went into some of the Pokemon cards. Now, there are thousands, literally thousands of Pokemon cards. There was unfortunately a really damaged Wigglytuff here. Um, this was a, a vintage um, jungle set card, um, Hollow Wigglytuff, and it's number 16 of 64. I think it's like a $75 card if it was in great condition. Um, but this one, as you can see there, it's all it's all beaded up. It's it, Yeah, it's in terrible condition. So, you know, whether or not there's any value left in that, we will wait to see. Um, but the ones that I have gone ahead and listed, uh, there were some great ones in this little mix of all different years. So I'm constantly learning about my Pokemon cards. Um, but there were some great ones uh, across all different years, all different, all different sets. Um, the one that I wanted to show you first was the Light Wigglytuff. Now, when I was going through, I was looking for these, which is little first edition um, first editions there on the card. So this Wigglytuff being a first edition Neo Destiny. Um, I can tell by the number code down in the bottom um, right-hand corner of the card. This is card number 54 of 105. Um, just down the bottom there, it gives you away uh, the number for anyone that's new to Pokemon cards. But being a first edition with that little dot, um, this card here, even though it's a basic card, um, goes on to sell for $30. And it is in very good condition as well. Um, so we've got a light Wigglytuff um, just sitting in this mix of a 1,000 cards that I was able to pull out. I continued to have a look at the Neo Destiny Um and rather than that light wiggly tough going into this bundle, all of these cards are actually first editions as well. So if I take you through some of them, um, we've got a Growlithe. I actually won't do that. I'll just, I'll just hold them all up for you. But there you can see there. Bunch of different Pokemon. Uh, Neo Destiny, all of them with the little first edition. Um, so those I've done as a bundle for $60. So I've done six cards for $60 and they are worth sort of $10 to $15 each. Um, so I've just done one big allotment there uh, of the Neo Destinies and then I just did the Light Wiggly Tough because it was $30 on its own. Um, but there are actually seven first editions in the Neo Destiny hiding in that mix. I thought initially it was going to be a lot of celebrations, a lot of more modern cards, um, but there's actually a bunch of cards that actually are vintage that I haven't yet gone through. So all of those cards there are all the old school vintage cards that I've been able to look out. So um, there is a bit still to sift through. They're not yet listed, um, those ones there. This one was a good one, uh, actually. No, I'll take you through a couple of other Neos. Oh, there were a few other Neo Destinies as well that I've done individually. Um, so there was an $18 and a $10. Uh, sorry, an $18 and a $20 with those two there. So about $38. Uh, worth of value in those, 68 when you add the light wiggly tough. So look, Neo Destiny first editions, stoked with what I was able to find there. Uh, and then we had more cards. So we got this Pikachu V Union set of cards, which I found very interesting. It's actually a, a, a four card combination that makes one large card. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but there it is there. The, um, the V Union set of four goes for $20. And I reckon that'll sell fairly fast, considering they are in good condition as well. So that was good. Um, we've got a Trevenant. Um, this Trevenant VMAX, number 206 of 203, uh, means it's a bit of a secret card. Um, but that was going for about 15 no, 20 That was going for $20. Uh, so that was cool. And then, yeah, we have this Marchamp. The Marchamp was from the Expedition series. It's a hollow. A Marchamp Hollow there, and that, that was going for some really good money. It was, I think it's about a $40 to $45 card, but um, because of the condition of this card, I've gone ahead and listed it up for $30. Um, so that one's there for $30. we have got another Expedition set as well. This card is a Reverse Hollow, um, so you can tell by the shininess of this card that it, it's a Reverse. Um, so $157 out of $165. This one was going for $35, believe it or not, that one there. And it's in really good condition too, so $35 bucks on that. So as you can see, guys, I don't want to harp on this for too long. Um, oh, actually, I do want to harp on it a little bit longer because I've got a really good one there. We've got a Venusaur VMAX, uh, and the Venusaur VMAX was going for about $30 to $35 as well. So just these single cards, and if I show you this, um, this is what we're working with. So I've got literally thousands of cards, and I've been pulling out what I've been showing you guys just here. So there's a whole lot more left to go through and I've 
I've only just hit the iceberg, but there you go. We've, we've got a lot of, of really good value. Oh, sorry. Really good values uh, cards to, um, you know, to list and sell. So there is some, some time element that goes into it, um, but I think it's definitely worthwhile. Bunch of these cards as well that I've got to go through. That's set. Koga's coughing and all that sort of stuff. So I'll put them aside. I'm just trying to group them all up. And then what I'm going to do later on when, I've get, when I get a bit more time is I'm actually going to look through all these hundreds of cards and I'm actually just going to try and put them into their sets. And then I'm going to sell the sets as bundles. Um, that's the plan. Uh, I don't know the true value of this, but I think all of that that I've actually gone ahead and listed is about $600 worth of value right there. Um, and then this as well should go for about $100 to $150. And I'm going to list it up in its entirety with the case, the games, and the the console as well. So there's about 150 there. Um, the shoes. Oh, and also too, he actually said, I've got, oh, have a look at this. I've got these on the floor. I'll take you down on the floor. So I've been playing with these cards down here. This is the full set of the celebrations, the Macca's celebration cards. He's got the full set that he mentioned in the video, um, but I think there's actually going to be multiple sets. So I've just been going through I've just been trying to create multiple sets. Um, so that's been taking me forever. I don't have an exact estimate on all of those yet. Um, I've got these here. These are the Nike Air Force Just Do It's. And they were going for about $200 in, in great condition. I'm going to go for about $150 on these. And they're a men's US 11 as well, which is an awesome size. So that was a really cool shoe to find. Um, we've got these Nike Air Maxes as well. They should go for about $50. And then these I thought were awesome. If anyone wants those Air Maxes, they're a men's US size 10. They're in great condition. And I just think they were really cool Air Max. Um, so yeah, if you want them, like anything I've got in this haul, hit me up. Um, so this is what we're working with. Like I said, I've got so much stuff to sift through here. Um, but I've, I've taken you through a couple of the the better valued ones. It's a little late at night now as well on a Saturday. Um, but I wanted to take you through, just just got the cricket and the uh, and the horse riding on. I might just turn that down. So what I've got here, what I've got here is, I'll turn that down. When you talk Yu-Gi-Oh, and I'm talking first edition, vintage 1996 Yu-Gi-Oh. If you can see here, all of these cards here, all of those, they're all first edition. All of them. These ones here are not first edition. So I've got, I've got a lot, pretty much the majority of first edition cards here for Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, so there's a lot more research to be done. However, I have got the Blue Eyes White Dragon SDKA001. There it is there. Now this card, if it's in a mint condition, it's worth about $700. And it's a first edition as well, obviously. So I think this card in its condition is probably about a $300 card, which is just madness. And I've also got the Dark Magician as well, which is another card that everyone in Yu-Gi-Oh! World always talks about. And this one's in better condition than the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, but the, the Dark Magician goes for about $60. It's not a first edition though. I really should have set this up better with better lighting, but you guys know it if you know Yu-Gi-Oh. I'll put some comps up on screen, but yeah. I found the two big ones. The Blue Eyes White Dragon, the Dark Magician. I've obviously determined that there's going to be about $1,000 worth of profit, if that makes sense. You know, by giving him a $300 head start with, as a buffer and doing a, a 70 30 split, what that means is I'm estimating or I'm valuing the haul at $1,000 in profit minimum. Because anything after that, $700 for me, $300 for him, is then, is then going to be continually consigned after the buffer wears out. Hopefully, you guys understand the breakdown of that deal. I've never done a deal like that before. Like I said, that is a small run through of some of the great stuff that I've got in this haul. Not the first time I've found Pokemon cards. I've actually had some crazy Pokemon card finds in my time. None more so uh, than when I was over in the US. 
And I'm going to leave that Pokemon card haul for you. Where I actually found a, a Shadowless Charizard uh, base set. You wouldn't believe it. Go and check it out. See you soon.